In this video, I'm going to show you how to make your own ROM hack cutscene in under five minutes. Let's get started. Go ahead and go to your header editor, and I'm going to be working in the ruins of Elf. And so I'm going to be in this header right here. I'm going to click on it, and then I'm going to go over to open events, and open events, and it's going to lead us to this area right here. I want my event to start when the player walks on these tiles right here. So if I cl right click on this trigger right here, and I come over to this logic section, it tells me what variable is watched, what value it wants, and then what script it's going to trigger. So if you've ever done coding before, you know that variables have names. In ROM hacking, they just have numbers. We also have an expected value. So expected value means that this trigger will only activate if I step on it, and if this variable is equal to a certain number. These two conditions are met, we will activate script number nine. Let's go back over to our header editor and open up our script associated with this header. So we scroll down to script nine and I've custom made this. And so I'm gonna walk you through what happens here. The first thing you always wanna do is lock all. And this prevents idle animations from happening and it prevents any other NPCs on the screen from walking around. So we're going to set overworld position of overworld 10 to these coordinates. So I want Grovile to appear right where my cursor is but I'm going to hide my Grovile sprite off in the corner beyond the realm of what we can see in the screen. And we're going to set his location to right here. So if we look in the bottom left part of our screen, we see that it says global 436277. Okay, so let's go over to the script editor. We should say C4360277. So for some reason, the set overworld position function needs a z coordinate which is like your height but it's always zero because that's the way the ds games are handled so just always have a zero here overworld 10 refers to this girl vial sprite here and this is 10 and you'll see over here it's id it's overworld 10 and then where we're putting it and then this down refers to what direction it's going to be originally facing so what is a movement we're going to assign overworld 10 some action and so now we're going to have to look in our actions tab up here. If you look under the HGSS tab for heart gold or PT for platinum, you will see different types of ways NBCs can move. But we're going to use these to create our own actions. And so this script tells us to use action three. Let's take a look at what I wrote for action three. So action three says, look left, zero X one. The zero X one is a hex number that is like an input parameter for these movements. For looking up, down, left, right, this is always gonna be just one, but for other things, this might need to be something like two, three, four, all the way up to A through F for hex values. Freeze eight just means we're going to pause for a little bit, then we're going to look, walk left for three steps, and so walk left is the slowest version of walking. There's walk left fast, there's walk left very fast. So once we have this done, uh, we're going to have our wait movement command. Wait movement is very important. You're gonna need this after every movement command that you that you're going to do, basically, unless you want the movements to happen at the same time. It's going to do as many movements as it can until it hits a weight movement. And so, if you want to have a bunch of movements listed for different NPCs, you can do that. One example of having multiple NPCs move at the same time is found in another script that I made. So, in this script, I have Grovile here, Selby comes over, and then pack of six Sableye and Duskmere jump you at the same time. You'll notice that I have a bunch of set overworld positions and movements before a weight movement. This is because I want to have all of these movements happen at the same time. And so here's what the cutscene looks like. If you enjoy this video so far, I'd ask you to subscribe, it really helps the channel out. Anyway, back to the video. And then, Grovile is going to say something to us, so he's going to use message 11. To find what message 11 is, I'm going to open my text bank, and I'm going to go to 11. And he's going to say, who are you? You're not a Pokemon. And then after we're done, we want to take that message box off the screen, and so we do close message. And so a simple script with a cutscene typically has four components to it as a movement, and a wait movement, and a message, and a close message. If you want to reference the player, you just type player, and then action. So another action the player does is exclamation, wait, and then walk down very fast sight. So anytime you put the word sight at the end of a command, it's going to mean you do that motion in place. You'll want to use this when a character is saying something. 
so you can distinguish which NPC on the screen is talking. Even if you have their name in the text box, it's really nice to have that. At the very end, we're going to have Groval walk off the screen. So action eight, let's take a look at that. Action eight has us walk right for three tiles and walk down for three tiles. And Groval will be just on the edge of the screen at the end of this interaction. We're gonna use this function called remove overworld. And so this is going to take that overworld off the screen so they're not visible. And we're just going to put in the parameter which overworld we want to get rid of. The last thing you want to do in your script is to increment your variable because you don't want to activate this trigger more than once. We're going to set the variable that we used to something else. So you're probably wondering, how do I know what this number is? In the event editor, we can right click on this trigger and we check this variable watched. And so on Windows, this is just under the programmer section, we're going to click on decibel and then we're just going to type this number in. So you can just copy and paste. Sometimes DSP uses hex and sometimes it uses decimal. Whenever you see a zero x something, that refers to hexadecimal. And so we're going to refer to this as 4073 in our script editor. And so we're going to set 4073 to four. And that means that this trigger will no longer activate uh, because it expects a value of three. And let's take a look at what this looks like when it's all said and done. I should mention that you can reuse variables over and over as long as the expected value matches what you're setting it to from a previous script. So since I set this value to 4, my next script I could use the same variable and just expect 4. This only works if your game goes in a linear fashion, so it's good to be able to have other variables that you can use. If I want to check if a variable has been used or not, I can go to my script editor, go to search for commands, and line to search. Now I'm going to check um, the variable 0x4022, and so this is a unused variable. I have a list of those off to the side right here. And I'm going to click search, and it will come back with a couple of different circumstances where I use that variable. But if we want to look for something that we definitely haven't seen before, and you know, hit search, you'll see that this doesn't come up with anything. And so you can use this list of unused variables to make your own custom events. If you've made it this far in the video, leave a comment telling me what video you'd like me to make next. See you in the next one.